the final decisions are yet to make. Who will end up on this final podium here at Jarama? Hola, in España. Welcome to Spain and welcome to the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Last year, Sasha Lenz ended up on third, so he's trying to compete for that rank also, but Antonio Abacete is really, really close. And for the Promoters' Cup, race number one could also be decisive. José Eduardo Rodríguez. If he wins, then he may be winning the Promoters' Cup overall. After Le Mans, it's going to be pretty hard for us to win the Promoters' Cup. But one thing is for sure, we're going to give it our utmost best. We don't give it And all eyes on the Battle of the Brits, Mark Taylor against John Newell. Just if we qualify right and just keep in front and don't worry about too much what's happening around us, just keep an eye on points of what we're doing and keep it secure. It's difficult because we're teammates. Yeah. So we've got to be very, very clean and very, very fair with each other. Do you know what I mean? So, but we should be all right. We'll see how we go. You're racing with good, with really good drivers. Everyone's a good driver, so and everyone battles well. So you know it's going to be a battle to the end. I think here. I'm waiting to go out tomorrow morning because it's a new track again to me. So I don't know it. So I need to learn pretty fast and hopefully gain some points back again. Who will put more dimes in their bank account on this final race episode and who will end up third on the Promoters' Cup? But we are ahead of qualifying number one. Huge, huge delay because at the free practice session, Sasha Lenz was unfortunately hitting the barriers with his truck while everyone is right now helping him out. Team John New, Team Jamie Anderson trying to get his truck back on the track because the battle from the podium is still going on. Sasha, how are you? Eigentlich so weit ganz gut. Es ist halt nur ein seelischer Schaden gerade entstanden. Ne? Die erste freie Training war super für uns. Die zweite war ja Katastrophe. Ja. So you said uh, obviously he's not doing great emotionally because it was a shocker. First uh, training session was very very good, and then the second uh, session there was this shock. Um, was erinnerst du? Was ist passiert? Ich bin äh, hab ganz normal rausbeschleunigt wie vorher auch und hab dann links eingelenkt, bin über den Körb gefahren. In dem Moment gab es einen Knall, Lenkung ist dann, also das Lenkrad hat sich be bewegt einfach nur. Ähm, ja, ich habe direkt voll auf die Bremse getreten, aber das Auto hat nicht mehr reagiert. Wir sind geradeaus über äh, Leitplanke drüber, Zaun, <lacht> alles war das da. Äh, stand, war aber weg danach. Gell? Also, so von, von mir aus war es halt nicht heftig oder so, es ist halt nur das Auto, was schwer kaputt ist. Ne? So uh, everything was fine, but then he tried to enter the left turn and he was over the curbs and uh, the steering wheel broke and he tried to, to get hard on the brakes, but it didn't work obviously well, so he uh, then crashed into the barriers, but luckily he said everything is fine with him. After a fantastic effort, Sasha and the team managed to get the truck repaired in time and get it just out in time for the first qualifying session and then the first race of the weekend, which we were all waiting for and it was sure to be a belter.
For the first race of the weekend, it was going to be Norbert Kish and Antonio Albacetti on the front row of the grid, with Sasha Lenz starting from fifth position. An important note for Antonio Albacetti to start the weekend on, because he needed to get as many points as he could in the championship to claim that third place. There was merely three points between them going into the weekend, and over the course of said weekend, it would go back and forth many a time. Speaking of going back and forth, though, there was a bit too much back and forth into the first couple of corners, and while Mark Taylor joined from the pits, Steffi Halm and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez got stuck together down at Turn 1, which would bring out a red flag in conjunction with this incident. Jamie Anderson was hit from behind by Stefan Fass and then into his teammate Sasha Lenz and all three of them would end up stuck in the gravel and the red flag was definitely needed on this occasion. The whole field was told to then reform on the grid and drag back what was left of their trucks. Steffi Halm here limping back to the grid and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez's truck would need a good looking over before it would go back out. He would join at the very back of the grid for the restart. Unfortunately though, Jamie Anderson had a broken spring and would not retake the start, so there was a big hole on the inside of the field for the second running of the race. Second start was a much tidier affair, even still with a little bit of contact in the midfield, but everybody sorted out their differences and got to green flag racing. Antonio Albacetti was in front of Jochen Hahn for the majority of the race, but Jochen, the six-time champion, was putting on phenomenal pressure and the Spaniard was trying his very best to hold his ground. The fans were loving seeing their hero in second place, but they were obviously shouting and screaming that Jochen was not going to get past. Behind them, Steffi Halm and Sasha Lenz still had their own battle to think about as well, while Norbert Kish did what he does best and led from the front. Norby was aiming for his 20th win of the season, which would be a fantastic record to set, while Sasha Lenz made some moves and got past Steffi Halm in the end. Andre Kersim and Jose Rodriguez were both going well inside the top 10, albeit having a bit of a lonely race. That was in stark contrast to what was going on behind. The earlier incident for Stefan Fass had earned him a 10-second penalty, which would drop him behind his Promoters' Cup competitors. Louis Requenco, Clemens Hecker and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez were all in hot pursuit. Stefan would need to be very far ahead to make it a safe win for him and keep the Promoters' Cup fight alive, and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez knew this, and he was pushing as hard as ever. The Spanish fans were loving the action, and so were we. It was great stuff to watch, really elbows out racing. Stefan would have to defend very hard soon as Jose Eduardo Rodriguez continued his charge through the Promoters Cup positions and it was looking all too inevitable that he was going to take the championship in the Promoters Cup while it was almost inevitable that Norbert Kish was going to take his 20th race victory of the year. It was a very well-deserved win for Norby as Antonio Albacetti did all he could to finish in second place. With Jochen Hahn next up, Sasha Lenz eventually coming home in fourth. Norby sets another record in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship though. The fans certainly treated to a great first race of the weekend. 20th race win this season, congratulations Norbert Kiss. Another nice number in the books. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> um, yeah. Very really happy about it, and you know, good season. And yeah, I like to offer this funny win for the team, <laughs> you know, because they are doing a really, really good job. And uh, again, very strong qualifying, very strong race. Uh, both starts was uh, good this time finally, so I could be safely in front in the in the first turn, and then build a little bit of a gap, and then take it easy in the last couple of laps. So, you know works here really well, here in Harama as well. <laughs> Norbert Kish takes a fantastic first win of the weekend, making it 20 for the season, joined on the podium by Antonio Albacetti and Jochen Hahn. Sasha Lenz clings on in fourth place with some very important points, ahead of Steffi Halm, who finishes the top five. Jose Rodriguez has a good start to his weekend in sixth place, ahead of Andre Kersim, Louis Requenco, who takes the win in the Promoters' Cup, with Heinrich Clemens Hecker and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez rounding out the top ten. John Newell and Stefan Fass were classified 11th and 12th, and everybody was eager to see what the next races of the weekend would have in store. But Jose Eduardo Rodriguez would be the Promoters' Cup champion for 2023. It's been 
first, of course, lining up here, so we're very quick here. Luis Ricuenco, enhorabuena, el, subir el podio otra vez. ¿Qué se necesita para sobrevivir aquí otra vez? Bueno, ahora se necesita tranquilidad, hacer las cosas muy bien, tapar los huecos, eh, bueno, salir de curvas bien, con bastante tracción, y bueno, y esperar a que pasen las 12 vueltas, ¿no? Una, una. So I asked him because I congratulated him that he ended up on the podium and I asked him what do you need to survive back again, uh, already again here and he said yes you need to stay calm and we do need every driver to just stay calm to get out of the turns very very well calmly and of course uh, accelerate in the right points of course. <laughs> Race number two of the weekend would share a similar reverse grid podium to what we saw in the last race at Le Mans just a week ago, with Louis Requenco and Andre Kurzim in the two Ivecos on said front row. The sun was setting at Harama and certainly the action was still hotting up because it was very late on in the day and the drivers were all fired up to complete their first day of racing with some wonderful action and look at how tightly packed the field was in the opening couple of corners. Jose Rodriguez was doing everything he could do to move forward ahead of Andre Kurzin while trying to also defend from Steffi Halm, Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kirsch. Sasha knew that he had a couple of positions advantage over Antonio Albacete and with less points handed out in the second race of each day he needed to move further forward than ever but Norbert Kirsch was supreme, soon overtaking Sasha Lenz, then Steffi Halm and then Jose Rodriguez being almost in third place before the end of the first lap. Louis Requenco continued to lead ahead of Andre Kurzim, but nothing the guys could do to defend would stop Norbert from coming through, and at about the halfway point of the race, Andre Kurzim succumbed to the pressure and Norby was ahead. Louis Requenco put up one hell of a fight with Norby as well, but eventually the Hungarian was through and into the lead once again. The battles behind were very intense as the whole field remained in one long train. Jamie Anderson also trying to come through from his earlier DNF was definitely one to try and get his elbows out and move forward. He knew though that the battle with Steffi Halm and Andre Kurzim in the championship was all but over so didn't take any risks and didn't want to damage the truck ahead of Sunday. That said though, he didn't mind having a good old scrap with Antonio Albacete. The two of them have butted heads a couple of times this year but still have fantastic racing respect for one another and it's great fun to watch. Louis Requenco is driving another absolute belter with Jochen Hahn behind him and Antonio Albacete, much like we saw at Le Mans. But it was again Norbert Kish who took an emphatic victory and opened up another lead with absolute ease. It was great stuff to watch. Andre Kurzim took a fantastic second place with Steffi Halm third and as the evening soon arrived the donuts and the celebrations very quickly began. Norbert Kish taking his 21st win of the season would now take his 100th win in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship and what a record that he and Reves Racing had set, it was epic. Iveco drivers Steffi Halm and Andre Kurzin were both very happy as well with their podium positions, especially Andre, as it was his birthday while we were in her armour, and what a present to give himself. Happy birthday again, Andre Kurzin, and right now the present for you was the podium. Well planned. <laughs> yes, uh, we are very happy. Birthday present too, and uh, yes, it was a very hard race, and uh, yes, we are very happy for the moment. Absolutely, and you swapped the engine yesterday, so which meant that you had more power right now due to the new engine also? Uh, yes, uh, not a new engine, we have another engine. Uh, yes, we have a little bit more power than uh, the last races and some problems uh, we have to fix this evening and uh, maybe we can do it tomorrow again. A very well-deserved podium for Andre Kurzim and Steffi Halm in the setting sun here at Harama, with Norbert Kish taking another emphatic victory and adding another amazing number to his list of figures in his career. The final results were Norbert Kish winning the race by over three seconds from Andre Kurzim and Steffi Halm, with Sasha Lenz in fourth place and Jose Rodriguez continuing a good weekend in fifth. Louis Requenco took a great result in the Promoters' Cup again, ahead of Jochen Hahn and Antonio Albacete, with Jamie Anderson and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez completing the top ten. Clemens Hecker, John Newell and Jonathan Andre completed the field. Everybody's eyes now turned to what great racing would come up on Sunday, and as the sun set at Harama, everyone would get to work and see what they could bring to the table.
Hello and welcome everyone to the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. This is the driver's parade. We're here at Jarama. We're entering the arena with all the spectators, so we need to wave properly, of course. So this is it, the final episode, round number eight of the Goodyear FIA ETRC. We're so excited to be back here in Spain. Everyone is in a good mood. Of course, the fans are cheering and we do see two more races ahead of us. We are ahead of race number three. Yeah, he will be starting alongside Sasha Lenz, uh, the direct battle in between you guys for the rank three. So the battle is on fire, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I mean, we are side by side. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, you know. I mean, I will try to do my best. I don't know how, but I will try to do my best for sure. Antonio Albacetti certainly fired up ahead of the first race of Sunday and all the fans were out, brollies aside, in the shining sunshine waiting for some action. It was Norbert Kirsch and Jochen Hahn on the front row, Sasha Lenz and Antonio Albacetti on row two, knowing that with more points being paid for the first race of the day, it was an important one to set up their championship fight into the very final race. A tiny bit of contact between Norbert Kirsch and Jochen Hahn into the first corner shook things up a little bit as Sasha Lenz moved in front into second position and would open up a little gap over Jochen and Antonio. Jamie Anderson was back to full pace with Andre Kirsten behind him as well, trying to fight for important positions in the top five. Penalty markers were sent flying from the off, but soon it was Jochen Hahn that was flying as well as he caught up with Sasha Lenz and a big move down the inside into the Farina hairpin set up a great battle between the pair. They'd been second and third in last year's championship and were looking to be second and third again in this year's championship too, so there was certainly a lot on the table for them to fight for. For many laps they were side by side, door banging all the way and Sasha was doing everything he could to defend from the Iveco. Jochen was very, very persistent and Sasha put up one hell of a defence lap after lap, knowing that Antonio Albacetti was behind and watching from afar. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez was still trying to recuperate what points he could, but after winning the Promoters' Cup, he was certainly not making too many risks. The Portuguese driver had been supreme all year in the Promoters' Cup, and now was once again one of the fastest guys up there, chasing down Steffi Halm. Eventually, Jochen Hahn would get the move done into Farina, but it was a great battle all the way through between him and Sasha, but that would help Antonio Albacetti in the championship, and Antonio would surely be fired up now to try and take places back away from him, and more importantly, championship points. The atmosphere was phenomenal as the two of them were fighting corner after corner, chasing each other down, but unfortunately the race would be stopped shortly after a very, very big incident down at the hairpin. Steffi Halm's engine had let go in her Iveco, dumping fluid down on the circuit. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez had lost it on said fluid and gone into the back of her, and then Heinrich Clemens Hecker had jumped on the same sort of fluid and then gone into the pair of them as well, with massive damage to the Scania. But luckily, all drivers were perfectly okay and able to walk away from this incident without any injury. It was very clear there was a massive engine rebuild needed for Steffi Halm, the truck resembling some sort of water feature on the outside of the circuit, while Heinrich Clements Hecker's truck didn't even resemble a truck. The damage would rule at least Heinrich Clements Hecker out of the final race of the weekend, and then the question mark would be over Steffi Halm and whether her Iveco would be back out for the last encounter of the weekend. The clean-up operation began and it was Norbert Kish, Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz confirmed on the podium. third place and right now three points ahead of Antonio Albacete. The battle between you and Jochen Hahn was uh, very spectacular of course for us at the TV screens. How was the inside? Yeah, and the inside was really hot, yeah. So uh, Jochen is a really old rabbit in the business here. Um, I make every time a small uh, mistakes and he closed every time the gap and then in this very small or uh, slowly corners he was a lot faster with me. And then I make a mistake, he can overtake me, so it's 
It's total in the end. Sasha Lenz still very happy with a podium finish and, of course, finishing ahead of Antonio Albacete in that race, setting themselves up for a great championship finale with Jochen Hahn second and Norbert Kish once again taking the top step of the podium with a shortened race here at Harama. The good news, of course, being that all three drivers involved in the incident were OK, and it was all smiles on the Promoters' Cup podium as Louis Requenco took another victory in the category. He was certainly on fire towards the end of the championship. Three wins in a row this weekend in the Promoters' Cup, making it five in a row, considering those results from Le Mans. But Norbert Kish takes another win ahead of Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz, with Antonio Albacetti and Jamie Anderson rounding out the top five. Andre Kersim and Jose Rodriguez both continued pretty strong weekends, ahead of Louis Requenco, Stefan Fass and Jonathan Andre, who gets into the top ten for the first time this weekend. Jonathan had been continually improving in the championship since returning to us, and it was great to see the constant progress, and we hope to have him back with us next season as well. Mark Taylor and John Newell were the last finishers, with one more race to go to complete the final standings of the 2023 season, but it meant also that the Promoters' Cup battle was on, now between John Newell and Louis Requenco for third in the Promoters' standings. here with Steffi Haum and we're keeping our fingers crossed to see you on the, the grid. How are the chances? I don't know at the moment. I think uh, we, we didn't have a little delay uh, for the race start. So yeah, for sure all the guys are working hard on it that we can make it. Um, but at the moment, I think it looks not so good. And uh, yeah, we will see it. But I keep my fingers crossed that we will be able to race. <laughs> We all had our fingers crossed that Steffi Halm would make it out for the final race, but unfortunately the engine change just took too long and it was not worth the risks for the end of the season for her to go back out into the final race of 2023. Louis Requenco and Andre Kersin were yet again on the front row of the grid and the battles were very truly underway in the hairpins on the opening laps. Norbert Kish making early moves down the inside of Jamie Anderson and Jochen Hahn to try and do what he did yesterday once again. But at the front, Louis Requenco was once again making a great getaway. Andre Kersim keeping him under pressure. He certainly had to keep that pressure up as well because he himself had Antonio Albacete and Sasha Lenz fighting for third in the overall championship right behind him. Very soon, Louis had unfortunately made a mistake and dropped behind the three drivers mentioned, and Norbert Kish was putting the pressure on himself. Then it was Jochen Hahn who made the move through, and the Spanish driver had a little bit of an excursion into the gravel, but managed to carry on. The Spanish fans still cheering for their heroes, and still going absolutely crazy. Sasha Lenz and Antonio Albacete had everybody on the edge of their seats, biting their nails throughout the entire final race of the season thinking about where the points would be and who would get third in the championship. So long as Sasha finished either in front of Antonio or within two positions behind him, he would claim third in the standings. Norbert Kish was closing in on the pair of them as well and potentially going to upset the result. We all wondered whether Norby would make the move on his teammate or whether Sasha would make a mistake and drop back. In the very final corners of the race, after leading all the way through, Andre Kersim's water tank on the back of the truck ruptured and he had just enough to make it across the line, while Antonio Albacetti made a mistake and Norbert Kish took the podium place. Second place in the final race of the season, giving Sasha Lenz third place in the championship and it was time for some smoke and celebrations. Norbert Kish putting on one hell of a show and doing some great donuts, joined also in burnouts by Sasha Lenz and Andre Kersim. Sasha was absolutely over the moon to take third in the standings, and rightly so, after a very, very difficult campaign for the team. Even sporting this lovely hat that his daughter made him if he got third in the championship. Andre Kersim's final win of the season was a brilliant one, and after a tough weekend, the team were over the moon. An engine change on Friday night certainly didn't make things easy, but they got there in the end. Absolutely. Uh, that's a nice hat. Yeah, it was a really nice race. Huh? Uh, 
yeah, my daughter building this for me, you know, and yeah, I say, okay, when we are PS3 on the end from the year, then I put on. It was unfortunately back to normal hats on the podium for Sasha Lenz, but as you could see, a lot of relief and a lot of pleasure from taking third in the championship, and a belated extra birthday present for Andre Kurzim in the form of a champagne shower and a race victory for the Don't Touch Racing driver. Brilliant scenes to complete the season for its final podium, while Louis Requenco took another win in the Promoters' Cup, but John Newell secured third in the standings by just one point. Excellent entertainment all the way to the very end of the championship in 2023, with the final result looking like this. Andre Kurzim, Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kisch, ahead of Antonio Albacetti, Jochen Hahn and Jose Rodriguez, who had a really good weekend here at Harama. Jamie Anderson was seventh ahead of Louis Requenco, Stefan Fass and Jonathan Andre, and Norbert Kisch takes the overall title by over 100 points from Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez is the Promoters' Cup champion, with Stefan Fass in second place and John Newell taking the third position in the category. Louis Requenco, like I say, misses out by one point. Mark Taylor and the team still hold their heads high after a difficult final weekend, coming so close to third in the championship before Harama. While there were spills and drama at Harama, it was a great way to end the championship and another bit of proof as to why the 2023 Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship will go down as one of the all-time great seasons and we hope to see you again in 2024.